All right, this is another spring update, and I'm recording this now because I'm getting pretty close to finishing up spring number two, which means I'm not going to be doing too much work with springs in the near future, but rather than start in the beginning, I'll start at the end. If you look, there's some white hex pipe down there in the gully. That's where I set up my ram pump. Now, it's probably about 12 or 15 feet below where I'm standing now. I hope to be able to set up that ram pump again and set it up in such a way that I've got options for supplying it. One of the options is the pond here in the corner. That'll give me, like I said, 12 or 15 feet of drop from this pond here. Now, I'm hoping that in the spring, whenever I want to fill up my water storage at the top of the hill that's supplied by that ram pump, I'll be not drawing water from this. Oh, I have to stop and observe that there is a goldfish right there doesn't see think he's hiding from me but I can see him so instead of supplying the ram pump from this pond I hope to be able to supply the ram pump directly from the springs now I've managed to get all the plumbing down and if you look here, there are two pipes that are running. One's coming out of the valve. It's a little slower than the other one. Excuse me while I kill a mosquito. Uh, it's the one to the left. It's trickling compared to spring number two, which is the one that's flowing at a faster rate there. In the spring... We get a lot of water, which is not unusual, but uh, earlier this year, whenever I was developing the springs, I had them both running into a catch basin and a pipe where I was able to measure the water flow, and that was only about a month ago, so this is uh, July, so that's in June. We we're already starting to move into the dry season then. And at that point, I calculated we were probably getting about 4,000 gallons a day. Well, they've slowed down since then, but I've still got flow from two separate springs. And they're coming down through this trench that will be doubling as a French drain. And that's part of the work we'll be doing this weekend we're turning we're going to turn it into a french drain party on saturday where my wife my brother and myself will be working to fill in this french drain that cuts across clear across the yard here the intent of that is to collect any water that may be coming down off this hillside here but it is much drier than it was previously because now we're bringing the water down through these PEX lines. Now we also see here in the trench we got some water down below but that only stretches up to about this point here. So we're suspecting we have yet another spring somewhere in here but with a french drain we hope to be able to just grab that water get it out of the way and dump it into the pond we don't have to worry about trying to put in yet another spring head and spring box for it we'll just let it feed the pond but you can see three lines here the three lines are a line coming from each of the individual springs and an overflow line. So only one, one of these is 
empty at the moment because we're not in an overflow condition. And this is where the two overflows join together. And this is the plumbing that I just finished up today. And I'll maneuver around all this dirt that's yet to go back into a hole and let you see what we got coming from spring number two. This is the uh, spring that we're, my brother put the assemblies together and I'll shut up and let you listen because whenever you're trying to develop springs that's one of the prettiest sounds you can hear. Now, these can be cleaned out pretty easy because we have two lines in here. One of the lines, and I'm trying to stabilize myself and do this at the same time, is this is where the water flows out. It has a bunch of small holes drilled in it. But this is the overflow line. So in the event the water rises up too high, it'll be drained out through here rather than backing up to the spring head. Let me see I can, if I can demonstrate how you can clean this out. So yes, you can swish the dirt around, get it up off the bottom there let it drain out through the overflow line. By the way, this is the first time I'm doing this with this particular spring box. See, I didn't have an overflow pipe before today. So, you keep swishing it around and the water cleans out most of the debris for you. There you go. Now it's, it's sucking dry, so I'll let that sit. I'll do that a couple more times before I get serious with this, of course. So, nothing's glued together. I do, I did crimp all the PEX lines, but because there's no pressure, I just fitted all the PVC together. Now, we do have this Gamma Seal lid for the top of this one, but I didn't bother to fully seat along this edge because I wanted to make sure I didn't have a perfect seal. The intent is to keep animals and critters out, but I also didn't want to put it, uh, create an airlock that prevented water from flowing from the spring. That spring is fed from over here, and in I guess it's going to be a couple of weeks before I get to that, but let me maneuver around this giant pile of dirt and show you where it's coming from. Then, keep the camera pointed the right direction. Okay, here we go. So, you can barely make out I've got two lines in this trench because the one that brings the water out from the water collection system has been tromped on by me so much that it's tromped down into the mud. But that's good because I need to be make sure that the water flows out from that collection system to that spring box. I'll climb up here a little bit closer so we can see what's going on behind the spring head. And this isn't going to be easy to get to, so bear with me while I try not to fall in. All right, so my brother decided that he wanted to go with a trifold manifold so the three pipes that are at the bottom have holes in them and that's how the water drains out of this spring the pipe at the top is more a placeholder than anything else but it'll eventually be used for um, an overflow in the event this spring is flowing so fast i can't drain it or to allow me to take this cap off and dump Clorox in there so that whenever this thing is buried, what is that, about five, six foot under the ground, five foot, that it will let me shock 
this spring. Now the shaky video is due to me again trying not to fall in. But whenever I was digging out this spring, it was only after I had developed the first spring, which is located over there. And I had it flowing good, and still this area was really wet. So I started digging test holes, and at about this location right here, I was observing water flowing into my test hole. And I would watch the murky water, and as the water gradually cleared, I could tell which direction the water was coming from. And initially, it looked like it was coming straight up from the bottom. So I kept digging down, digging down, until I finally got to the point where it looked like the water was coming from the side. So we dug over to the side and got to a point where we had decent flow, so it was flowing without restriction. And we decided that was enough. And here's the collection system from the back side. I don't have much mud sealing things from the back side. I'm going to have to do some more work on that. That is neither fun or enjoyable work because I can only get in there by hand to pack it in. So I'm just going to have to tough it out and do it. Now I had said that we had the first spring, which has been developed, is now carried, buried under this mound of dirt. It was used, uh, developed using um, a commercial spring development kit, which was sort of on the pricey side. And when my brother found out it was like $350 delivered, he decided, I can do the same thing out of five gallon buckets. So we're going to experiment and see how this one does. I am, of course, not going to bury this until I'm convinced it's working good. Now back to take a look at what's going on here. This spring, I had set it up so that I have this watershed that's above the spring. Now the plastic flows down over the hill so that if there's any water that gets up over the top of this, which it shouldn't, it'll flow over the plastic down beyond the spring because the collection system is about here. So the plastic runs over to here. So the, the plastic should keep the groundwater from contaminating the spring. And I'm probably going to end up cutting a little off that PVC pipe that's used to shock spring number one. But I can walk around on the top here and let you see what it looks like now that we've got rock filling things in. Behind that pile of dirt and those rocks is the collection system. Now it flows down through this trench that we've backfilled with more rock and this is the line that feeds this spring box. This is the commercial spring box. It's nice, has some nice features, but it's, it was expensive. One of the good things about it is I don't think it's going to be affected by sunlight to as great an extent as the white plastic buckets. But again, the white plastic buckets are going to be underground. I should shut up for a second while you listen to this one. I can clean that out a bit, but I'll leave that go for now. All right, so running around that spring box is an overflow line that comes from the spring head as well as an overflow from inside the spring box and it comes down to here where the two overflows from that spring and that spring meet as well as the supply line coming from what I call spring number one. The thing to take note of is the dirt. I don't see any dirt in the ditch, I mean water in the ditch. 
So that's giving me the impression. I got a decent seal behind that collection wall. So at this point, I've basically shown you everything that there is to see at this point. And the next time I do an update, Hopefully you won't be seeing PEX lines and all you'll see is lids. I'll end it now. It's long enough. Take care.